at IBC 2017. It's Kirk Harnack with Hans von Zutphen in the Telos Alliance booth. We're talking Omnia SST, this amazing FM processor that runs on a PC. Hans, welcome in. Hi. Hi. Uh, well, tell us about this Omnia SST. Omnia SST is an FM processor, as you said, runs on a PC, has lots of cool features, such as a D Hummer that can get rid of uh, 50 or 60 hertz humps from bad cables. Wow. Uh, D-Clipper, well, known for many other products. D-Lossifier, which can repair uh, MP3 files. Wait a minute, so if some of my source material is not so good, it's it's gone through lossy, that will help it sound better? It will help. It's, it's not perfect, but yeah. it will help. Wow, okay. Azimuth correction, which can uh, get rid of phase shift between left and right channel, sure. or even if you have some track that has multiple different uh, tape head alignments and shifts, it can basically correct all of them at the same time. Wow. Even anti-phase, it can make... So th this is great for one compatibility. Okay. Noise removal will just remove some noise from the recordings. Uh, natural dynamics will take out the percussion sounds and boost them separately from the rest. So it sounds like before we even get to the processing, we're fixing the audio first. Yep. That's the whole wow. idea. What a great idea. To have okay. something to work with. What's next? Uh, then, uh, we have a face setting which you can use to change the face of, uh, yeah, to, to basically introduce uh, face distortion effects to replicate the sound of some older analog processes. Okay. Auto EQ is new since our last video, so let me go into that a bit more in a bit more detail. What it basically does is it will adjust uh, the level of each band mm -hmm. without compression. So the total level is not affected and you don't get extra density. Yeah. And the great thing about that is that you can now use the multiband at a very low level and with the same amount of density on each channel, on, on each band. So you have way finer control over your audio than before. Okay. As you can see here, for example, it's adding 10 or 12 dBs more bass to this track. And that means that to, to get the same effect with multiband, you would have to go something like 18 dB deep into it. And then if the dirt level drops, everything would get sucked up. And this thing avoids that. This is really actually pretty significant, this auto EQ, because it lets the station have the signature sound that they want and consistent cut to cut sound without doing that at the expense of hyper compressing everything. Yeah, that's okay. the idea. All right. What's next? Uh, AGC, AGC yep. several stereo wideners, an equalizer, uh, bass harmonics generator, and a high generator in case you would ever have uh, low pass filtered content. You could use that to replicate it again. Uh, two multi band compressors, and as before, you can uh, listen to each band separately to just hear what it's doing. Uh -huh. So if you hear something weird, you can uh, you have all the ways, all the means to analyze what's happening. Yeah. And by the way, you can also just hear the audio at each point in the chain to hear what's going on there. Wow. Uh, the Clipper has had some improvements since last time. You can now, uh, you could already get with our Composite Clipper up to 150% or 140% uh, peaks in the left and right channel. But now we're actually dynamically switching between single and dual sideband encoding. Because in some cases, single sideband encoding will give you higher peaks, and in some cases, dual sideband encoding will give you higher peaks. And so if we constantly switch between the two and pick the one that gives us the least amount of peaks, you can actually avoid clipping the signal and gain about 1 dB of loudness without clipping anything. So this sounds like you're actually being very um, opportunistic with regard to the, the FM bass band and getting more left and right modulation in there without doing additional processing. Yeah, and the crazy thing is, since this thing is somewhat single sideband-like, I actually heard from some people here at the booth that they've been using this and got reports that the reception improved due to sure. it. So you get a dB louder and better reception at the same time. Awesome, awesome. Okay, what else? Um, well, then the last thing I should probably show you is Micro MPX. Yes, this is the technology that lets you send uh, stereo MPX baseband signal across um, IP at only, what, 320 kilobits per second. Yeah, yeah, we improved the codec further and we also have added a lot of new things such as all kinds of redundancy uh, mechanisms. Yeah. For example, you can now send the same signal over two different uh, signal paths yeah. and then the receiver will combine them and if one of the two drops out, well, it just ignores the second package that it receives because it gets the same signal over two different paths. So I can use redundant IP paths, maybe yeah. public internet plus a microwave signal or yeah. two public internets. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and it has also now forward air correction. So basically you can configure that every 32 packets you send to recovery packets and then if it loses less than two packets in that block of uh, packets then it will just keep playing without yeah. any interruption. Wow, wow. So, so you have a decoder 
at the yep. transmitter site. This runs on, will, on a this runs on a PC. I will switch to the decoder. Oh, here. Okay, so this is software that would run at the transmitter site. Yep. To decode. Okay. So what you can see here is you can uh, you can see how the packets are coming in. Actually, this uh, this green line here is showing the packets and the latency. So if there would be something weird going on in your network connection, then you would immediately see that here. And these blue dots on the top here are the recovery packets that are coming in. So just to be clear, the decoder at the transmitter side brings in IP and spits out composite um, MPX. Yeah, yeah. SST okay. generates the whole uh, signal, including RDS and stereo. And as you can see on this side, this is what gets decoded. So all these uh, improvements in the audio, like the extra high peaks, etc., which you would lose if you go left, right to your to your transmitter site. You maintain all those things, and uh, you can run this on a PC. In the future, not too distant future, there will be some hardware available from the Telus Alliance that will uh, just a hardware appliance that will take the IP in and give you MPX out. Yep, that's cool. it. Wow, and you also have the ability now to get micro MPX out of the Omnia Nine, I believe. Uh, yeah. So. so as of, uh, well, two days ago, actually, five minutes before the show, it was working. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the Omnia 9 has also now the same clipper as, uh, as SST. Yeah. And, well, with that clipper, we also immediately included MicroMPX into it. Wow. This is another step on the road to virtualizing radio. If that works, you know, you don't have to. You can run this in your own station. You could run this in the cloud and bring that MicroMPX signal to your transmitter site via one or multiple paths. This is really exciting. It's Omnia SST. And to get more information on it, go to telosalliance.com and look under audio, Omnia Audio Processing. There's Omnia SST. And by the way, it's really affordable. Hans, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for your great work on this processor, too. It's great. Right. I'm Kirk Harnack at IBC 2017 for the TELUS Alliance.